Hello and welcome. Today we are going to discuss about the Twitter image service design. The purpose of this video is to understand how Twitter designed the image service and what we can learn from their experience. I read an article which was published in the website named highscalability.com and that article actually was published in 2016. It's an old article but I think we can still learn a lot from from that article and we can also learn how Twitter handled 3000 images per second. So let's move forward and let's see what was their initial design and what problems they faced and then we will see what solutions they came up with. We have a user for example and this user accesses the Twitter application using the smartphone. You can also access Twitter application using a web app, web uh, platform, web browsers. So, so the initial design is something like this. The, the user creates a tweet and, and he wants to tweet. So what he can do is let's say he has a message and he wants to upload some images with those messages. Let's say he wants to upload three images and he sends this request. He sends this request to the Twitter front end, TFE. Now, this TFE application actually handles the uh, authent routing and authentication. The routing plus uh, authentication services. And with that, uh, the TFE application then calls another service, which is the image service. Image service. So, this image service actually is responsible for creating uh, or handling, you can say, handling different images. Now, this request then forwarded towards the, the variant generator. Variant generator. Generator. So, the variant generator, the responsibility of this variant generator service is to create different sizes of images, different variations of images. Let me show you what is the actual work of this service. So, as you can see here, here, uh, here is an image and uh, now here you see have different sizes, small size, medium size, large size and the original size. So, the image generator, the variant generator actually creates these three different variations of, of that image which the user uploads, right? Now, coming back, then after creating different variations, this image and this tweet actually, this whole tweet is stored in a database, which we can call a blob store. Blob store. So, this is the actual path, the original design which Twitter had. And with this design, there are some technical issues, some problems which they faced. And let's discuss what problems they faced. So, the first problem they faced is lots of wasted bandwidth. Now, what is, uh, how can we define this? So, what happens actually, the client posts the tweet to a monolithic endpoint. So, the monolithic endpoint means, let's, let's come back to the diagram. So, so, this whole message, which is, which is a message uh, plus the image. So, this is a complete payload. Now, this payload is actually transferred to a single uh, endpoint, a single method you can see, you can understand like that, which handles the, this complete payload. Now, now, this payload either is uploaded successfully or it's not uploaded. So, this is uploaded in a transactional manner. So, either the transaction becomes success or otherwise it fails. So, this was the main issue especially uh, when is there a network problem or user is in an area where network is not very strong. So, if he wants to post a tweet that sometimes will not be successful because if image is heavy or for some reason uh, it cannot be able to upload then the whole process is, uh, is kind of discarded. So, the bandwidth is actually uh, wasted here. Now, the second problem is it doesn't scale well for large media sizes. So, as you can see, if we have three images, 
and if some if one of the image is large then it it is problematic for the person for the user who is trying to post something and it cannot be uploaded uh, especially in those areas or in those regions where network or the internet is not fast for example in european countries maybe you can say the internet is faster comparing to the other region for example some african countries or somewhere in china or maybe in a remote areas where network is not strong insufficient use of internal bandwidth now what does it mean actually twitter is not a single application they and they do not have only one or two service they have a bunch of services which interacts with each other so the number of other services are also involved in the process of creating and persisting a tweet so the because the endpoint is monolithic you also only have a one endpoint which handles the complete tweet and combining the media with the tweet metadata so this bundle actually uh, is then passed to different services so this payload uh, is passed to to other services also for their usage so it's a replication kind of thing where one service makes a copy of the tweet plus media and supply it to other services now when you have a large payload heavy payload then it travels from one service to another and that also uh, uses the bandwidth and that's an insufficient use of internal bandwidth and and the last part is the improper or you can say no garbage collection so what happens here so you have you have a database of of images and you have images of different sizes some are large some are uh, small uh, as you can see in the variants so and and these images are for example they, they live here forever right so, they, so the twitter do, did not have the uh, mechanism to to delete old images it, maybe they are here for one year or two year or what on one whatever year so there was a lot of space which was required to to handle those images because twitter is a global application which is being used by millions of users so every day a huge amount of data a huge amount of data is uploaded and it needs more and more space twitter needs more space to to store different media which is being uploaded uh, by the uh, by the user so these were the problems which twitter faced and uh, and then they came up with a new solution and now let's discuss how they designed the new solution and what benefit they got from that so this is their old design and now let's discuss the new design and let's see in detail how they how they discussed these problems so now you have a user so you have a user and this same user is is using uh, let's say a web a portal to to make some tweets and he wants he has a message and plus he he wants to upload some images or some media this can be a gif or or maybe an inline inline video now it calls the twitter front end and twitter front end now calls the image service image service the same path but now the there is a new uh, design now in this design we have the image variants as well now we have the image variant which creates the image variant the variant generator variant generator i'm using the short form and then this uh, after generating the variant the image service is, is is putting the image in a blob store in a blob store and the metadata is handled separately metadata right now the image is actually separated from the metadata and and the actual image so metadata may contain like the name of the image the size the user info the user who, who uploaded and things like that and this image service actually returns actually returns a media id right a media id 
So this media ID is actually a handler of the media uploaded by this by uh, this user. Now in this way, this separated the metadata and the actual image. So in a, in in old times, they use blob store. Uh, let's say in this cloud world, you can say it's a S3 kind of thing, right? So since the article is a bit older, so we I'm using the same names which they used. So this is how they did a separation. This separation created a flexibility in their design. Now let's discuss the second part is the upload part. What was the design for the upload? To introduce a new uploading design, which they called segmented resumable upload. So the new design was the segmented resumable upload. Now let's discuss what is this segmented resumable upload actually. So this is a mobile application, and user wants to upload. For example, this is an image, and user wants to upload this image to the Twitter Twitter server. Here we have the Twitter server, you can say, and uh, and instead of uploading the complete image, they came up with an idea of segmentation. Now, in this segmentation, what happens is this picture is actually sliced into different segments let's say as i am doing the slices right so let's say this is slice one slice two three four five and six so the total number of slices are six and when someone wants to upload this image so this happens something like that for example we want to do post request so definitely we are uploading it's a post request and we have a, a url something like media media slash upload so this is a url and then we have something called a command so we have a command command is let's say a pen and the second parameter is media id so as you know the media id which is actually sent so let's so this is the media id i just want to uh, show you the image service returns the media id so in the same upload process that media id is used for example the media id is uh, 46473 and we have the segmented index the slice index right so we segmented index and here the number of that segment so what happens is when someone tries to upload the media the application the front end the mobile app actually creates a segment and it uploads the segment one by one with the command of append and for example, if someone is in the area where he is uploading the image and in between the networks goes down as the network goes down and for example, he has uploaded three sections, right? He has uploaded three sections or three segments. Then the application will stop uploading and will keep the number three in somewhere in in the in the app. And when the internet connection or the network resumes or comes back, then the upload starts from the point where it was suspended. So the next upload then starts from the segment number four. And here the segment index was the segment index will be three because the last uh, media that was uploaded, the last segment uploaded was three. And then the, the server will will respond back you can say that okay give me the fourth one then the fourth segment will be uploaded and this is how it will complete so this design actually helps a lot in uploading the media and also increase the efficiency of upload now i want to discuss 
in detail. So we, we saw the different parts of the improved design. We saw how Twitter uh, designed or how Twitter separated the media with the metadata and how they came up with the idea of segmented resumable upload. Now let's see when we create a tweet, how what happens and what is the actual process? Tweet creation. So now let's say we have this user with the mobile phone. It then connects to the Twitter front end. And then Twitter print, uh, front end uh, talks to different services. So Twitter has different services for different tasks. Uh, for example, creating a tweet. For creating a tweet, they use Twitter Pie. For user profile, they have a different service. They have a DM service, which is for direct messaging. Uh, they have a scheduler, which they call Twitter scheduler. So right now, since we are talking about tweet creation, so Twitter uh, Tweety Pie is the is a service which will be called. So we have the Tweety Pie, and then the Tweety Pie calls the image service image service. Now this image service uh, actually has a post processing queue. So they have a, a post processing queue, which you can say something like that, where different images are uh, transferred in a queue. And this post processing queue handles the face detection and, and child uh, pornography. So after that, this and, and also with that, they have another service which is for the metadata. So this is the database that handles the, the metadata. Metadata related to the uh, images. After that, this, this image, once the post-processing queue is successful or, it, it, uh, or the post-processing queue response like oh, the images is fine and there is uh, no such thing, then uh, we have two services. One is the image bird, image bird, which handles the variation of different images. And we have another service, which is the uh, video bird, video bird. And video bird actually then uh, do the transcoding video transcoder. So it does the uh, video transcoder service actually. And this service handles the transcoding of the video. And then this all information is, is handled or is transferred to a data store, which you can call in a data store, in a blob store, you can say, where the the images and the videos are then stored. So this is how the image, or you can say, this is how the Twitter handled uh, their creation, tweet creation process. Now let's discuss how beneficial this was and what they got out of it. They introduced and concept of garbage collection. Now, what is the concept of garbage collection? As you know, they, we discussed that they have images which, which used to be there in this case, and, and that those images were occupying more and more space, and this was not efficient. So for that, so the Twitter came up with how many days we can keep an image, and after that period, we can delete it. So the original image is kept until deletion. So they do not uh, delete the, the original image. Variants are kept for 20 days. The media platform team did a lot of research on the best expiration period. So the media platform team did a lot of research and then they came up with the 20, 20 days. And the idea behind is uh, that as somebody uh, post a tweet, so with an image, so until 15 days, it can remain usable. And after 15 days, most of the tweets were not referred back or that were not, not useful. After 20 days, we can see, safely delete the variations of those images.
with no time to live no expiration media storage results in daily storage growth of 6 tb every day as you know the twitter is a global application so 6 tb every day of new data were added for on on twitter data centers saving storage and computation results in saving money in 2015 Twitter saved six million dollars by introducing the twenty-day TTL. So, as you can see, the impact was very, very high. Six million dollar is a big amount, and saving six million dollar is a huge achievement. Now, image improvements. They did some image improvements as well. They experimented with uh, WebP, and images were on average twenty-five percent smaller than corresponding PNG and JPEG images. saw increase in the user engagement especially in emerging markets where small size cause less network stress so in in the regions as i uh, discussed before in the regions where network connection is not as as fast uh, as in other regions so let's say some some region in in asia and africa then this improvement was a big achievement progressive jpeg was another option to to try it renders in successive scans first scan might be blocky but it will refine itself with successive scans so another uh, Im- improvement you can say or another image type they tried was the progressive jpeg facebook's fresco so the client side support is provided by face face uh, facebook fresco library let's see what is a facebook's fresco library so this is a github page of uh, uh, facebook's fresco library So Fresco is a powerful system for displaying images in Android applications. Fresco takes care of image loading and display, so you don't have to. It will load images from network, local storage, or local resources and display a placeholder until the image has arrived. It has two level of cache: one in memory and another in internal storage. So Fresco is a library which can efficiently handle the loading of the image. so you don't have to write code for loading and displaying images so twitter used fresco library to improve the image loading where again in those regions where network connection is still not very fast the result over 2g connection was quite impressive a 27% decrease in load time a 74% decrease in failure rate so users with slower connections really see a big win So Facebook's Fresco library helped Twitter to gain the user's confidence. The user in slow connection areas can also use Twitter and can also engage with the Twitter application in a much better level. Now let's see what what are their achievements. Doing the simplest things that can easily that can possibly work can easily screw you. So this means that. Initially, they had a monolithic endpoint, a one endpoint which handles the complete payload, and and this is this is simple. Implementation of such a service is simple, but simple things doesn't mean it will always be efficient or it will always work as expected. Decouple. So after that, that decouple the metadata. and the image upload and also with image upload they came up with the idea of segmented resumable upload move handles not block the media id as we discussed earlier the twitter image service creates a media id and passes the media id to the user and then user can use that same media id to reference the different media or different images or, or videos he or she uploads segmented resumable uploads i discuss this in detail that how the image is actually sliced and then uploads those slices to the server and if there is a network connection problem then the upload is stopped at that point and then when the connection comes back the remaining segments is then uploaded to the server a strong garbage collection so 20 days ttl was a big achievement and you can say uh, it was a financial achievement also and as uh, on a technical side so they saved a lot of space and also a lot of money image optimization with webp and progressive jpeg 
Use of, use of Facebook's Fresco enhance the user experience in the areas where network is not stable. So these, these are the achievements which Twitter had. And after implementation of the improved design, the user engagement increased and not only user engagement, but they also saved a lot of money and also a lot of space. So again, the purpose of this video is to see how we can learn from this design and how we can implement this design in our application. So I hope you would have learned something from this video and uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you in next video.